Good morning. Happy fifth Sunday of Lent. We gathered here again, so hopefully I've got it fixed so you can see up and down. Still working on all these things here. But we gather uh, to enter into these last couple weeks of Lent. So again, such a strange time, but a time to re-encounter the Lord in the life of the Lord. We offer uh, this Mass as we begin with the entrance and fun. Give me justice, O God. And please my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We take a moment in calling to mind our sins to help prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you, that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. 
When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told him, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into this world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to him, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to take one moment to check the technical aspect here. I, in my view, just see comments and not myself. So I'm going to see if things are working on the phone. Okay. Can you see me, or do you just see these comments? 
if somebody wants to respond. Sorry for the interruption here. Well, either way, okay, good. So I'm going to go back and preach there. Some have said that it feels like we're living in a movie. So on TV, I guess, in a sense, I feel around this film, I'm in a sense in a movie, I guess. But that it feels that way. It's something that the types of reactions and the things that we see going on, we see and we feel like this is something that we've seen in a movie before. That it's a kind of a feeling like there's this, um, <laughs> you know, we know the way the world normally is and that something has changed in a way that seems so controlled and so powerful that can only happen in something unreal like a movie. It reminds me, in a sense, uh, comes to mind as a movie of, uh, that I've always liked as a kid growing up and, and still, a Jurassic Park. So many, I assume most people are familiar with it. The Jurassic Park, classically, a story about, well, let's make some dinosaurs. We think this will all go well. We'll try and control it, and everything will go according to plan. Which, as we know in most movies, does not go according to plan. One of the lines that they use to describe this is kind of famous from the movie, is that life finds a way. That as much as they try to control it, and as much as they try to kind of dominate and arrange everything the way that they want it, life finds a way. It doesn't go the way that they expect. Things don't turn out you know, how they want. We have the proclamation of Christ in the Gospel, I am the life. That in the movie we're talking about life in an abstract, non-personal um, sort of way. But in our faith, our faith is personal. That it's not just an abstract power, life, an unknowing sort of conglomeration of causes, but it is a person, Jesus Christ, the life that we believe in. That life finds a way, Christ finds a way. That Christ enters into the situation in the Gospel, again, one of these classic Lenten Gospels, so deep and profound that can't cover all of it in just one sermon but that he enters into the situation of death, the death of his good friend Lazarus, that he's good friends with these siblings, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, this house in Bethany. We see him visit there a number of times. And that he enters into this death, that there's these reactions we see, the reaction of his apostles, the reaction of the crowds, the reaction of Martha and Mary when he reaches the tomb. That he comes again as life, the one that will find the way, that there's these different fears. You know, in the first, there's this confusion of the apostles. The apostles' response is confused. They think maybe he's talking about just Lazarus being asleep. They don't understand Jesus is talking about sleep in a, as a metaphor for death. That they think, well, you know, all these different things about, well, should this happen or that? You know, this kind of uh, classic thing we see of the apostles not getting things the first time through. That Sleep is an important image also, I think. I want to mention that Friday, Pope Francis gave a special blessing called Urbi et Orbi either, to the city of Rome and to the whole world, a blessing um, in a special way for the situation we're in. And he talked about sleep as well. Christ was asleep in the boat, in the storm, and the fear, um, the lack of faith of the apostles, and Jesus' invitation to them to not be afraid. That this image of sleep, this misunderstanding of the apostles, is on the one side that... Um, Lazarus is just asleep, thinking that the type of issue that they're dealing with is just something of this world, and the issue, of course, in the boat, of thinking that Jesus is asleep and therefore uncaring, unaware of what is going on. But he says, through this, this death of Lazarus, or through this storm, you will see um, to not be afraid. He reaches the town. You have Martha's reaction. Martha, who comes out quickly to meet him, is we think of the other scene of Martha and Mary, of Martha actively working and saying, you know, tell Mary to help me, and Mary sitting in the feet of Jesus. Likewise, Martha's the one actively who comes out to talk with Jesus, where Mary stays in, in mourning in the house. Martha, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I believe. What does she believe? She believes that God will raise him on the last day, as she says. Sometime far in the distant future. 
this thinking that the life of Christ is something that will only come later, that right now we don't have access to. He will show that that, again, is a misunderstanding. The crowds who say, couldn't he have done something to, as he healed the man that was born blind, which we heard last week, couldn't he have done something so that this man would live? And so he says, you know, again, this is a misunderstanding. You know, I can do something more than this. And last, Mary, who arrives, who echoes her sister. If you had been here, we, we would have not have died. This grief and this sadness. That then leads to Jesus' personal response, his direct response, where it says, Jesus wept. That this sadness, even though he knows it will not end in death, doesn't mean that there's not a great sadness to this time of loss. But he's going to show now, through all of these different reactions, of the truth. What it is that he desires them to understand through this. That he restores Lazarus to life. A life of this world. Although we know that Lazarus will die again. That this healing that he gives, that they all desired, he wants to show you know, is a powerful sign of the life that he has. But he wants to lead them even to something deeper. He wants to lead them to the understanding of that life of the Spirit that we see in the first reading and the second reading from the prophet and from um, St. Paul to the Romans. That Christ comes as life right now. That the life that he gives, yes, like Lazarus, enters us back into this life. You know, that through baptism, we are given a share in life. And that this life, though, is preparing for a complete fulfillment the point where death will no longer have power over us, where there will be the complete defeat of sin and death. There will be entrance into that life that is fully unrestrained. You know, that Lazarus comes out and says, wrapped in the cloths, and they say, unbind him, let him free, let him loose. That in this life, we um, begin again, in a sense, with baptism. We can see the resurrection of Lazarus as that sign. He enters back into the same world, but with a new spirit. You know, Christ has put his spirit in us. He enters back to live in this world with a new spirit. And then to live in this world in a way that is preparing for a life that comes, that is a complete freedom, a complete uh, lack of fetters or binding on us. I want to go back to Pope Francis for a second. You know, that He talks about this time of trial. And he invited us Friday to see it as a time of choosing. What he meant by a time of choosing was a time, as he says, to decide what matters and what passes away. That we suffer the loss of many things. And so it is to listen to the proclamation that Christ is risen and by our side. So as we have an anchor, by the cross we have been saved. We have a rudder, by the cross we have been redeemed. We have a hope, by the cross we have been healed and embraced. That he speaks of this again in the image of the sea at the storm on the boat. But that again, this applies here, I think, with this gospel. That Jesus is showing that these misconceptions lead to kind of thinking that the life before Christ was kind of all that there is. The misconception of thinking that the life with Christ is something only far in the future. But the, in fact, what he says is that the life with Christ is different than the life without him. That to know Christ is different than to not to know him. To walk with him is different than to not have walked with him. Uh, Pope Francis says that in another one of his writings, that to have this companion with us changes life, brings life. Again, life finds a way. Here, Christ finds a way. So when Pope Francis says this is a time of choosing, he means that this is a time to choose to embrace this as a time to find God. To uh, Jesus, you know, he doesn't desire or rejoice at the death of Lazarus. He weeps. But that he works through it. He works through this time of separation to show a deeper truth, to reveal a deeper life, a deeper level of what it means to live in Christ, that we desire to live in him. He desires to share life with us now, a true life that can exist even in the midst of these circumstances, that a life that is not bound by circumstances, a life that is prepared for fulfillment. That I, uh, again, feel like there's so much more that could be said, but we want to end with this prayer for life, this image of life. I am the resurrection, I am the life. He is here with us. I want to um, 
conclude with the blessing that Pope Francis concluded with at his uh, one on Friday. I encourage you to look up the full um, video and homily and things if you're able to find it for his Urbi at Orbi blessing. I posted it uh, on Facebook yesterday, so you can just scroll down if you're on Facebook and find it. Um, but I want to end with this blessing as we ask uh, the Lord's grace to be with us. Dear brothers and sisters, from this place that tells of Peter's rock-solid faith, he was at St. Peter's Basilica, I would like this evening to entrust all of you to the Lord through the intercession of Mary, health of the people and star of the stormy sea. From this colonnade that embraces Rome and the whole world, may God's blessing come upon, down upon you as a consoling embrace. Lord, may you bless the world, give health to our bodies and comfort to our hearts. You ask us not to be afraid, yet our faith is weak and we are fearful. But you, Lord, will not leave us at the mercy of the storm. Tell us again, do not be afraid. And with Peter, we cast all our anxieties onto you, for you care about us. We continue to, uh, by asking for a deepening of the gift of faith as we profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We raise now prayers of petition as we lift up our needs and the needs of the world at this time. We pray for the Church, for a deepening of faith, an encounter with Christ, the resurrection, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of nations and their leaders, for wisdom and guidance to best address and combat the spread of coronavirus COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the poor, for those in particular need at this time, for those who suffer, particularly maybe loneliness or isolation, that they may be consoled, may know the help of people of goodwill and the presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who care for the sick, for first responders, for those in the line of danger, that they may be protected and blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families and friends, for the needs that we experience at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Judy Meckelhoff, for whom this Mass is offered, all those mourning the loss of loved ones, that they may be given the gift of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now for the purification and protection of the Church. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty God, we lift up our prayers and intentions. We ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus' friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the Father, the host of angels, adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Malachi, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm, in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, 
that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Speaking of communion, I wanted also to read a prayer of spiritual communion for those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Been good again celebrating with you. I keep working to learn how to do all these things correctly, so a good humbly, humbling experience to, to work again. Sorry for any mistakes or different things with it, um, but we continue to prepare. A couple of quick announcements we have coming up next Sunday, of course, Palm Sunday. So we'll be planning again 11 o'clock uh, to stream here. We, I don't know if we'll be able to give branches or set them out or anything, but we'll try to communicate if there's some opportunity we have there. Then we begin Holy Week. Um, we'll be streaming Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday morning in, in Sunday morning in both uh, English and Spanish. So the more information about that will be coming, but preparing for all those different things. I also want one more comment. Uh, speaking of Jurassic Park and, and the gospel today, one of the other lines that comes to mind is where they say, we spend so much time wondering if we could and not whether we should in terms of the, the, the plan with the dinosaurs. So as Pope Francis said again, we're in this time of choosing. We are limited now in all the different things that we can do. So we get that chance to reflect on what we should do, how to use this time, how to respond to the Lord and the life that he offers. Pray that you have a very blessed week. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.